The following information can help strengthen the visual part of your presentation. In-class presentations will be assessed based on these criteria. So what should you consider when preparing a presentation? The items shown here will help create a presentation that enhances your talk rather than distract the audience. This presentation will provide some helpful tips for selecting backgrounds, text, colors, figures, animations, and sounds. Consistent backgrounds help to unify the presentation. There is nothing more annoying than a PowerPoint presentation that uses a variety of different backgrounds. It's distracting and undermines your credibility as a presenter. Why, if you can't make it look neat, then is your science equally sloppy? Avoid backgrounds that are a combination of light and dark. This will ensure that your color selection will work anywhere on the slide. Notice that this slide background is darker on the right and lighter on the left, but the difference is subtle enough that it won't be distracting. I also recommend using a dark background for your presentation. It makes the room darker, making it more difficult to see the audience. This may help calm your nerves. To avoid having a slide that's too busy, you may need to remove the background graphic on slides with figures. In this presentation, the cream swooshes at the top of the slides are the background graphic. Your font size should be visible from the back of the room. The following are examples of the same style font at different sizes. As a frame of reference, the text in the bullet points in this presentation uses a font size of 30, while the titles are between 40 and 44. If you're unsure whether the font is too small, print out a slide and place it on the floor. Can you read the slide from a standing position? If not, then the font size needs to be increased. For the purpose of a presentation, sans serif font styles are easier to read. Sans serif fonts are font styles that lack the detail at the end of letters. Some examples include Arial or Chicago. Serif fonts, such as Times New Roman or Cambria, are usually better for print. Which of the fonts below are easy to read? You will also want to choose your text carefully. Give each slide a title. The audience may not remember all of the detailed information on the slide, but they will remember the key point because it is in the title. Maintain a consistent grammatical style on each slide. This makes it easier to read. For example, use all commands or all gerunds. Convey key points with wording on the slide. Bullet points should serve as cues for you. They shouldn't contain everything you are going to say. Don't use too much text. A slide covered in all text just tortures the audience, as is shown in the next slide. Right now, you are trying to read the paragraph shown on the slide while I'm talking over it. Your audience will not be able to pay attention to you if they are trying to read all of this text. Now that we've looked at selecting a background and proper usage of text, let's focus on color schemes, figures, animations, and sounds. There are a couple things you want to consider regarding the unity of design and color scheme. Use the Master Slide View and Design tab to maintain consistency. The Master Slide View allows you to make changes to the layout of slides, and those changes will be applied to future slides that you insert into the presentation. Try to limit text colors to two, although in certain cases it may be helpful to use more text colors when creating a legend for a figure, such as one showing fluorescent immunohistochemistry. Limit graphs to five colors, otherwise you may be trying to present too much information at once. Look at the dots at the bottom of this slide. Notice that they are contrasting colors. 
These colors are also soothing. They weren't selected at random, but were part of the color choices PowerPoint provides for this design, which can save time when trying to make color selections. To ensure your colors stand out, use light colors on a dark colored background. Font colors can make a difference in your presentation with regards to contrast, emphasis, and individuals that are red or green colorblind. Font colors need to have sufficient contrast so that it is easy to read the text. Lighter text on darker backgrounds work well. Notice the difference in contrast with this text shown below. Font colors can also be used for emphasis. Bright colors stand out, so save them for special emphasis. Besides, bright colors can hurt after a while, so use them sparingly. You also want to be mindful that some individuals cannot distinguish between red, orange, yellow, and green hues, commonly referred to as red-green colorblind. My college classmate says that red, green, and yellow all look a similar shade of brown to him, so he had a hard time seeing what we were talking about regarding our microscope data. The take-home message is, if you use these colors for emphasis and contrast, it may exclude some of your audience members. Images are one of the most powerful way for you to convey your message. An image really is worth a thousand words, so limit the number of images per slide to help your audience focus on your main point. Be sure to use images that are appropriate to your message, otherwise you risk distracting your audience. You also want to ensure that the images are legible and visible. Nothing is more annoying than going to a talk and hearing the presenter apologize that the figure is illegible. You also want to place images on a slide so that they balance the text. This is pleasing to the eye and keeps the slide from being too crowded. This slide is an example of what not to do. Too much text and a figure that is too complex. This may work for a peer-reviewed journal article, but it is not effective for a presentation. Let's look at how this can be improved. Notice that the information from the previous slide has been broken down. Here, only the first part of the figure on the previous slide is shown. Subsequent slides would show pertinent information from that big figure. You should think carefully about whether it is necessary to go through the entire figure for the purpose of your talk. Ask yourself if you can best convey the main conclusion of the experiment by just showing your audience the most important evidence. In this example, you will want to point out the color-coded text legend so that the audience knows what each of the color markers is labeling. Notice there's a text sentence that summarizes the results of the experiment. After talking the audience through the microscope images, panels A through D, you would then discuss the data in the graph. Finally, the title reports the conclusion from this experiment. This helps out the audience members. In case they don't catch all of the detailed explanation you provide for the figure, they at least get the take-home message. Be consistent if using animation and sound. Animations can be used to reveal one bullet point at a time so as not to overwhelm the audience with information. Sounds can enhance the talk like including a mating call. Don't use sounds for transitions or bullets. This is distracting. You also don't want to overuse animations because they can slow your timing down and again are distracting. Avoid using animations and sounds that may detract from your message. So in summary, you want to maintain consistent design colors and background. Uniformity makes your presentation look professional and gives you credibility. You also want to emphasize key points with text and figures. This helps your audience better remember your take-home message. And balance the content of your, of your slides with empty space. Overcrowded slides overwhelm your audience. Good luck! I know that you will have a great presentation and look forward to helping you create it.